Eve service. It's good to see all of you with us this evening, especially those of you who may be visiting. If you are visiting with us, we're glad you're here. We hope you'll come back and worship with us again at any time. At this time, our choir will now lead us with special music. So you will have a part. And so Michael will do a reading, uh, and then I will join you as a congregational response. And our line is, make your light shine. So I'm going to let y'all practice that. Make your light shine. So he will read, and then we will respond, and then we will light uh, a candle uh, tonight. So let me get our light. Emmanuel, God with us, interrupt and open our eyes to the wonder of this night, that we might catch a glimpse of your glory in the simplicity of these moments. Make your light shine. Emmanuel, God with us, interrupt and soften our hearts to the message of this hour, that we might turn toward you and have the way prepared in us for your coming. 
Make your light shine. Emmanuel, God with us, interrupt and open our minds to truly listen to all who speak and sing this evening, that we might hear your voice cry out from many lips. Make your light shine. Emmanuel, God with us, interrupt and fill our spirits with the courage to admit when we are lost and the insight to recognize that we have been found. May your light shine. We please stand for the invocation. Almighty God, you made us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge. Almighty God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you in the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Emmanuel, God with us, with eyes open, hearts softened, minds listening, and spirits full, we rejoice that you interrupt what we have in mind in order to bring into being something more than we dare imagine. May your light shine. Amen. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another with the prayer and confession, which is found in your hymnal on page 8. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be and be in church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us the joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Our hymn of praise is number 234. O come, all ye faithful, standing as we sing verses 1, 3, and 4. <laughs>
one more to do. I'm sorry, stand back up. <laughs> well, make sure you get your exercise. <laughs> Away in a major, number 217. <laughs> So tonight I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and at the end we will say the Lord's Prayer together. But I want us to just simply lift up. I know it's nervous. You're like, okay, I don't want to say anything. Um, but my guess would be is you all have a blessing in life. They may be sitting beside you. Um, but just give God some praise tonight as I pray. Uh, and just name the praises that you have to Him. Uh, and so would you pray with me? Most gracious God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings, everything. We would literally be here for days if we were to really name them all. And so, Lord, I am thankful 
through for the large and the small blessings that you give us, for the times that you answer our prayers differently than what we pray. We thank you, Lord, for the things that you give us, the things that you don't. We thank you for the people who are surrounding us, the people that have gone on before us, the people that are yet to come. Lord, we thank you for your son. We thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you, Lord, for the joy that it brings us, the peace that it gives us. And Lord, we just give you all the praise and all the glory. And so if you know the Lord's Prayer, I pray that you will unite with me in our spirits as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever.
service, we've had the opportunity to receive Holy Communion and to light candles uh, as we take the light of Christ into the world. And so I'm hopeful that when you came in tonight, you have a communion uh, kit. Uh, if you do not, if you would raise your hand, and I will make sure that Wayne uh, gets you one. And then also you should have a candle. Uh, and so if you do not have either one of those, if you would raise your hand, we'll make sure that we get those to you uh, as we move forward tonight. Looks like we're good. All right, so if you have your Bibles, I want to read to us a part of uh, the Christmas story. And so if you'll turn to Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, we're going to read uh, verses 8 through 12. Luke 2 records it this way. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So the last Sunday I shared with those who were here in worship, I shared with some of the more eccentric uh, gifts that I have received uh, in my life. And so um, if you were here, you know that I got the strangest gift uh, was a jar of peanut butter. Uh, that I got from my grandmother. Um, and then the most frustrating gift was uh, some wood blocks that my Aunt Louise uh, gave me one time with absolutely no purpose whatsoever. Um, and my family is here tonight, so they can attest to you. Martin said, oh, we must be in trouble. You're bringing in the family. Uh, so they can, they can attest to you that these are true stories. Uh, these are real gifts. Uh, and my sister and her husband, uh, they... We're gracious to drive my parents down, and so I thought I would start tonight with a story about their son. Uh, and so one Christmas, he wanted Santa to bring him a playset, uh, an outdoor playset, uh, and he had great visions. And so this playset, he was going to wake up on Christmas morning, he was going to go to the window, and there was this playset was going to be outside of his backyard, and he was going to spend all day swinging in the swings and sliding <laughs> down the slide. So he woke up excited and anxious for the day, and he went into the living room, and there was a little bit of lumber um, and a note that said, look outside. And when he ran to the window, there wasn't a place set, but there was an additional big pile of lumber. <laughs> and Santa had decided that the best way for this gift to occur would be a bonding experience between father and son, is all day long they would get to build this place set together. And he cried. <laughs> and I believe, if I have the story right, I believe he said this was the worst Christmas ever. <laughs> now, I tell you all that story because Christmas, Christmas Eve service for preachers, it's a pretty hard deal because most everybody, we know the story, we know bits and pieces. Um, but then the other intriguing thing about Christmas Eve is I know there are some of you in the room who are excited about Christmas so much that you can hardly wait because you do have new grandchildren. You have grandchildren that you want to get to see, watch open their gifts and, and, and all of this. Uh, and so there are many of us that are just exciting and, and anxious and waiting uh, for tomorrow. Uh, but then there are others who maybe it's not the worst Christmas ever, but it's hard because you're going through Christmas for the very first time without somebody you love. My wife, my daughter, and I, we're going to spend our first Christmas without Claire's mom. And there's some of you who <coughs> have lost loved ones this year, and you know the pain that we're talking about. Christmas is exciting for some and difficult for others. There's others of you in the room that are battling illness. I know parts of your story but I know that some of you are questioning, like, will I, will my family member even be here next year? Some of you are tired of the illness that you find yourself in. Maybe you're just tired. We're all tired of COVID. And so I want you to know that the Christmas story 
to me, the beauty is not that it's this picture-perfect event. It's not that everything comes up merry and beautiful. I mean, the Christmas story is about God saying, in, in the moments that are difficult, in those moments, I'm going to send a light to break through. Early Christians, did y'all know this? The early Christians, the way that they considered and discussed Christmas, that was the phrase they used, was light piercing darkness. That's how they understood what we gather in this place to celebrate. That was the essence of Christmas. Christ had come in a dark moment, in a dark time, and people had hope. It was a message of joy. And so we need Christmas. My family needs it. Your family needs it. Our church needs it. Our community needs it. And I suppose that's why we're here. Most of us, we're here because it is good news of great joy for all people. We need a Savior to help us through the darkness. And so Luke says that the birth of Jesus, that Jesus was placed in a feeding trough, was literally in a stable with all of the mess that comes with it. Literally. And that the very first people who are invited in to this story are shepherds. They were night shepherds. And if you know much about Jesus' time, the night shepherds, they were the lowest of the low. So on the socioeconomic status, they couldn't get much lower than night shepherds. So I want you to picture where the birth occurs. I want you to think about who God invites into this moment. And hear these words again. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah of the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. He says, if in that moment the angels just could not contain themselves, and so they broke out into song, and they sang glory to God in the highest, peace on earth to whom God favors. And I love this song because the message of peace on earth, if you go look in the New Testament, the word peace, that's really what I want us to focus on tonight, is the words that the angels say. The, the word peace is mentioned 92 times. And it comes to us, it's the Greek, and it's Irene, and it means take something that is fractured, something that is broken, and it is made whole again. And about half of the references that said in the New Testament, they were, they were talk about our relationship with God. And then the other half, talk about our relationship with other humans, our, our relationship in humanity, because we have brokenness there as well. And that Christ offers peace. I had somebody last Sunday that said, I wish I could be with you on Christmas Eve, but I'm going to be with my mother who's 97 years old. And I said, I get that. I mean, you don't know how many more you will have. And they said, you know, but here's the beautiful thing about my 97-year-old mother. She walks around and she tells me, I'm ready. I'm at peace. And I've heard that numerous times from people as they get towards the end of life. That I'm ready. It's, it's the peace of God that is poured out in that moment. It's the peace that was poured out to the shepherds when they were terrified in the night. It's the peace that God brings to us as the people of God. And the announcement is that a Savior has been born. Today a Savior has been born. So what does... What does Christ save us from? For the Jews, the saving was, what they were looking for was saving from the Romans. And so they were looking for that type of a Savior. But we all know that it was much bigger than that. It was saving them from themselves. In fact, that's saving us from ourselves. Saving us from the darkness of having an unforgiving heart. Saving us from the darkness of the prejudices that we have, saving us from the darkness of the gossip that we go and share, saving us from the anger that lies within us, from the apathy that we may have. Christ saves us 
from ourselves. The New Testament words, the, the work of Jesus is the word redemption or ransom. And those are not words that we typically walk around and talk about. But in the first century, they would have understood it. They would have clearly understood what the gospel writers were talking about. Because in their day, if you, if you had a debt that you could not pay, you didn't have bankruptcy. You didn't have a way around this. So if you had a debt you could not pay, you literally sold yourself into slavery. And so if someone loved you, someone liked you, someone had enough to be able to come beside you, they would come along and they would pay your debt for you and you would be literally set free. This is the language that when Christ was born, he came to redeem us. He came to ransom us. It's the reason Apostle Paul says that we were bought with a price. This child that we come and we celebrate today, this birth that we are here, it's, it's God's way of saying that I am sending a gift that is going to redeem you in, in the hopes that when you see him on the cross, you have a fuller picture of the depth of God's mercy, and the depth of God's love, and the depth of God's grace. How much he loves you. That amazing love of God. And you can be broken free of any darkness that holds you. That's the message of Christmas. And so that's one way of looking at this peace. But the second that I would tell you is the peace that we have with each other. Or maybe the lack of peace that we have with each other. We live in a culture that is full of conflict. Right? Would y'all agree that we live in a culture that is full of conflict? If you don't believe me, go watch the news. And you can watch any news. You can watch CNN or Fox News, whichever one you prefer. And you go watch a few minutes and you can see the conflict, conflict that exists. Conflict that exists within religion. Conflict that exists within politics. Conflict that exists within cultures. We have conflict. We have conflict within families. We have conflict within churches. Jesus came to point our feet. As followers of Jesus Christ, he came to point our feet toward peace. He taught it everywhere he went. He said, yes, love your neighbor, but he said, love your enemy. He said to pray for those people who persecute you. He said that if somebody takes your shirt, give them your coat. He said to, um, uh, to, to, to forgive people, not just one time, but many times, and to continually to forgive, to show people mercy who don't deserve it. He says to show them grace, even though they may not be showing you grace. He teaches it over and over and over again. This is the way of peace. In fact, Jesus cries two times in Scripture. And you may know these stories. He cried once when Lazarus died. He said that Jesus wept. That's the Bible verse that everybody remembers because it's short. Jesus wept. Um, and then the second time is when he looks at Jerusalem. He looks at Jerusalem and he said, the Messiah had come for you. But they were looking for the military Messiah, right? And so what he said was, I'm bringing you a way of peace, a way of compassion, a way of kindness. And you missed it. And so he looks at Jerusalem and he weeps. Because they missed the way of peace. Those small acts of kindness, those small acts of compassion, every time that you forgive your brother, every time that you forgive your neighbor, every time you help a stranger. I love Mother Teresa said this, small things done with great love will change the world. And we can look at the world and we can look at the world tonight and think it's, it's impossible for peace. It's silly for me to stand up as a preacher and say that we should be looking for peace of Christ among all people. But I believe that God continues, as the Christian story continues to pour out peace. And if you don't believe me, I would love for you to have the opportunity to talk to one of the parents of the kids of the angel tree. Many of you, if you're not familiar with the church, we've done an angel tree where we, we brought in gifts for uh, families who were in need um, this Christmas. I can't imagine the burden and the stress and the worry and the pain of not being able to, to know whether my kids were going to have Christmas. Can you imagine tomorrow morning when those kids open those gifts? 
the joy? Can you imagine being the parent? What would it give you? Man, it would give you peace. Small acts of kindness and compassion. I told you I was going to leave this box till it's overflowing because there are kids who are cold. But can you imagine what those kids will feel when they get a cold a, a coat around them? It may not be cold tonight when you leave, but I promise you at some point in time this year, it's going to get cold outside. Can you imagine what those kids are going to feel like when they're able to put a warm coat on them? Many of y'all know we're connected to the surf house. Can you imagine what those people who go in and get their clothes, many of you donate your clothes to the surf house, the pride that they have in feeling themselves when they're able to take clothes home and they're able to wear something that they're proud of. It's the peace. It's the Christmas story over and over and over again. God pouring out his peace on his people. We are called as the people of Christ is to live a way of peace. I, I believe that God, 2,000 years ago, was saying to the people then, and I think he's saying to us now, that when you have those dark moments, I'm going to give you my life. My life will point you to a way of peace. Now go take it. Take it to the world around you. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Most gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for your Christmas story, our Christmas story. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. We thank you for what he means to us. We thank you for the light that he brought to this world. We thank you, Lord, for the salvation that he offers each and every one of us. The wholeness. And to think that we're broken, and you bring about restoration. You set us free. And so we give you the praise. Lord, help us as we move forward tonight, going into tomorrow, the rest of the season, and all year, next year. We pray, Lord, that you can help us to be instruments of your peace. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to turn into your hymnal as we continue our liturgy for Holy Communion. Page 9. I will read and then you will respond in the old <coughs> wording. The Lord be with you. Yeah. Lift up your hearts. Yeah. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed in us your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your great glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, 
we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Would you pray with me? Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to take your communion sets and open your bread. This is the body of Christ given for each of you. Then you can open your juice. This is the blood of Christ poured out for each of you. And then they ask the ushers that they would come forward as we have an opportunity to light our candles. We will also have a candle litany, and you will respond well as well. Michael will do a reading. You got me? Uh, Michael will do a reading, and then we will respond, let there be light. So let's try that. Let there be light. Sign of nine. 